But uh, I, I come from Joensuu, and Joensuu, as you know, is, is the town from uh, which uh, Stavros Faso started to make Commodore 64 games early on. And of course, uh, Ilari Kuittinen, for example, still the CEO of Housemark was also. And, and we were kind of like the same group of, of, of youngsters. And then what happened was really that I was happy studying history in Turku University. Uh, and then Ilari Kuittinen, the CEO of Housemark, came to me and said that, well, you know history uh, and, and you have uh, 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 studying history, so, so you have to know how to uh, talk a lot of bullshit. And I said, well, you know, that is a part of, of, of being historian. And he said, well, you know, my marketing director just left the company to go to, uh, to uh, talk bullshit in advertising agency, so I need a new bullshitter. So would you come over and test how, how your bullshitting uh, works in the game industry and not just history? And I said, well, well, I will try. And now uh, almost 25, year, 25 uh, years later, I'm, I'm still on this big bullshit uh, uh, tour. But uh, from that, I have to say that today it will be then just a real thing going, going on. But that's the history. Um, I don't know anything about coding. Uh, I, I have learned in the work then about the business, about, of course, architecture. I've been a, a, a you know, a, a business analyst, uh, so forth. But it always have been, I have had a good chance to be in a great companies like Housemark, like Elisa, like uh, uh, ITT, and now, of course, Huawei. So I have always teach myself Learn, learning in the work and and being being around with the great people, I have noticed that that is always and and never 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 hurts to ask. So so when when having with the great people, it it ha has always been the uh, great way to uh, learn. So today, talk about as as told about the uh, global app development in China. So there will be uh, basically three parts. So it will basically, I will go through that, why the China is, is so uh, potential and important uh, business-wise. The other, other thing is that which I will go through is that uh, what are the really uh, difficult parts and, and, and the strange parts also to get to the Chinese markets uh, from the uh, application and, and specifically on the mobile game uh, point of view. And then the third part is, is basically uh, also to show that how we in Huawei are trying to make it easier for, for Western developers to get um, to the Chinese, Chinese markets. So <clears throat> first of all, and I'm, I'm not going to these to, uh, too deeply because I, I think uh, many of these numbers are, you know, I can say all, all of these, you know, the numbers are just huge. But uh, really the situation right now in China is that it is really an Android, Android country. And uh, uh, this is something that have really been uh, changing in the past, past uh, Uh, a couple of years, so the it, iOS was very, very growing, growing really, really fast. And as you see, nowadays Android is the uh, main platform for the for the Chinese uh, uh, consumers. <coughs> the other uh, interesting point there is that uh, really the uh, average daily usage duration. Uh, in in uh, of the devices in China, and this is 2019. But you know the Corona, of course, it was easier there. But still, the growth of the use usage of, of mobile devices in the Asian markets, not just uh, 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 China, but for example, as you see in Indonesia, it's starting to be now four hours per day. Per sorry, use. sorry, Pano. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. We are just yeah. see, seeing your first slide of the uh, PowerPoint. 
uh, not the actual presentation. Perhaps there's a screen switching okay. issue. That's good. Thanks. Okay. So and uh, uh, now, okay. So now you can. Okay. Thank you for that. So yeah. So uh, I will go here. So as you see, the in China, uh, the usage of of mobile screen is huge. So for up to four hours or, or close to four hours per day per per user. So it is really that uh, on the Android phones. So it's it's really something that uh, people. Well, I, I think the same thing. In, I, I don't have the finished numbers, but you know the people are really, really using the internet uh, through their mobile devices in that in that uh, market. And and of course, uh, again, just just to get these big and uh, bigger and bigger numbers. Um, China app market. So, for example, 2019. Uh, app downloads approach 100 billion, which is up to 80% over the past three years. Again, I don't have uh, last year's figures, but if we look the whole whole uh, world last year, we saw like 20, 25% uh, rise in the in the figures around the world because of the uh, corona and people being home. So it it is just a just a huge huge uh, market and 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 still growing. And of course, the important thing there is also that, uh, which is very important to remember, that um, China is, is also a market where it is not just about the numbers, but it's, it's also that the uh, users are spending money. So uh, uh, this, is, this is, of course, very important there too, that it, it is not just the amount of users but it is really, uh, uh, if 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 we take the revenue uh, from the from the uh, mobile uh, applications, China China is 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 by far the number one market in the world. And as you can see there, that uh, the growth percent is still high, and it's it's you know getting getting. We know that again uh, last year and beginning of this year, it just keep on growing okay but then we then we get to the uh, interesting part of of the whole thing so i'm going to go through uh how to uh public uh, publish a game in in china and uh, of course in china uh, and this is uh, many of these things are for the games it's the same thing that uh uh than in, in many, many other other things. But games are, of course, if you have like news, so then as, as you see there, the category-based admission of finance, it is measures for the administration of financial licenses. If it's a medical application, it's administration of medical institutions. Media and entertainment, it's a provisions of for the administration of uh, administration of internet, audiovisual program services, and news, uh, the administration of internet uh, news information services, and then of course data privacy is is the own own their own thing, uh, taxation. Uh, well, that is I am not going through the taxation. It's it's basically uh, uh, very simple. But then when we go to the game segment of these, we get to the uh, really interesting points. And, and then we are really talking about uh, a number of different uh, uh, issuances, uh, authorization letters, uh, and so forth, and that the game has to have. But let's start. Thinking about the Chinese market, I'm, I'm sorry that this is a, a small screen, but just to say that uh, basically going to the Chinese market with the game, it's the same thing that in any any other markets uh, in the beginning. So it's getting to know the China, uh, to know the facts and fiction, um, to get the useful tips for success. It has to be localized. 
it's it's it and this is something that it doesn't have to be just localized for for make you know the uh the game to be in chinese and uh chinese characters text anything like that but you know it really have to go to the uh, uh chinese consumers and that is also something that we come up with the legal side uh i rounded that up because uh, this is basically um, um, from Mob Vista. This is 2018, and, and the things really have changed. So uh, when it says that publish by yourself in iOS, or find a local publisher, iOS and Android, that have all changed. So uh, in iOS, last year, China basically, Apple had the opportunity uh, for the developers to publish in iOS by themselves. Uh, and then uh, Chinese government said not anymore. So now iOS and Android is in the same same uh, list. So if you want to publish there, you need a local publisher. And I will come back to that. And then, of course, the marketing, data monitoring, monetization. So in all of the other parts, one, two, four, five, six, games in China, totally same as everywhere else. But when we go to a publishing, it's something totally different for foreign publisher. So let's let's go deeper to the publishing side. So I'm just checking that I'm on time. Um, so the first requirement for publishing mobile game in China is really that you have to have a local partner, or then you have to build a local presence. And why you need to have that is that that ESBN number, which is needed, and I will go in the next slide deeper on that, that you have to have to be able to publish your game, that can be only given to a Chinese company, which means that the 51% of the company have to be in Chinese ownership. And this is something that, uh, for example, many European companies have uh, uh, mis uh, have, making, have been making mistakes, even a bigger ones. I'm not now going to tell names here, company names, but they have, for example, built an, an, a licensing agency to China to license, for example, their uh, game assets uh, for toys or, or for, for magazines and so forth. But they haven't, they have kept either the whole company or uh, most part of the company owned by, you know, European or American company. So even though that they have a daughter company, let's say in Beijing or Shanghai, but if it's not owned 51% or more by your Chinese entities or people, it cannot get the ISBN number. So that's why, you know, you need the local partner as a publisher or the local presence. And when you are looking for the local partner, I think from my point of view, you ha should have at least these capabilities. Access to your multiple publishing systems. Uh, what I mean with that, I come also more detail that later. In China, it is not game just between, you know, um, it's, it, it, there's no Google Play there. Uh, uh, it is it is a multiple uh, stores and publishing systems uh, via the whole thing. So so all of the manufacturers have their own. Then there are a lot of different app stores. So so that is that is important there. Uh, the partner have to have a good local contacts because this is the licensing and getting the ISBN number is is really a, also a contact game. Um, they have to have the ability to handle any required state licenses, and they will be multiple. Uh, as said, they help be the experience of sharing local stores, network, and so forth. So you don't have to go one store after another. Many of these uh, partner potential partner companies have their own uh, backend, which actually then combines. You, you also, you publish once and it goes to multiple stores. 
and of course the localization marketing customer support and community money management and there i would say that the important thing is the localization because then we when we go forward and this is now we go to uh, now we go to, uh, to the point of of the hard parts of publishing a uh, game in china so if you want to publish a game in china you need the isbn number so the the international how it goes the same thing as in, as in the books and this is just an example of documents what you need to have for getting this isbn number to your game so you have to uh, have the original contract with your chinese partner that will be the publisher uh, with the authorization and of legal handling scanned copy of your business registration from your home country so all of these this is this is the easy part the game details so a detailed description of your game performance in overseas markets include studio location region where the game is currently operating the approximate number of users revenue and social impacts name description so a description of what this game name is what is the background and what does that mean uh, screenshots of the game's uh, overseas version uh, copyright detail with this it is basically a screenshot of overseas version of your game that displays your copyright information that hey this this game is copyright of x y jet studios to uh, uh, 2021 um then the imp interesting thing already in this point you have to have the chinese version of the game and you have to submit uh, submit one android uh, and this is of course if we want to have it in both android and apple davis device but for example if you go to android you have to have that game ready on the android device uh, uh, pre-installed so so you this is part of the process you also have to have that um, there's this an, new anti-addiction systems so uh, specific real name registration time control payment and tourist mode systems have to be included there and screens are showing each of these systems in chinese version of your game must be included uh, all Chinese script, so all a complete list of Chinese characters that appear, uh, appear in the game, including but not limited to system prompts, NPC dialogues, mission plot descriptions, and game prop names. Everything in, in Chinese uh, characters. Of course, the hardware configuration, the software uh, uh, versions, and so forth, and then the uh, brief text uh, description of the game's main functions and so forth um, and and this is something that then goes to a china's national press and publication administration which is basically issuing a limited number of isbn licenses to foreign games every month and a estimated waiting period uh if 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 you go as a as a western company or if you are trying to do this by yourself and you are finding a paper entity to China, uh, this can be anything from 12 months to 18 months. Uh, but if you have a partner that has a good relationship, uh, that can be faster. There's also three strikes rule, uh, three strikes and you are out. Uh, the uh, NPPA, can ask you three times uh, or you have basically if, if they see that there's some mistakes or, or problematic in the game or in your documentation and so forth you have three times uh, uh, that you can change uh, uh, and make make corrections after that three times it starts all over again so so doesn't it sound easy Good, because I, I will tell that it, it is a good thing that if it sounds very hard, because then we will go also to a solution. So, so you need to have that number. But then also, 
you need to have the computer software copyright certificate. And uh, this is uh, also a specified unique identification number, where's the name of the app and the company that owns the certificate is there. And this is really important in the Chinese market because this really shows when you get this computer software copyright certificate, it basically certificates by uh, the government that it is your uh, uh, IPR, that you own that. And uh, this is also the important thing that then that the name in your app in China must match the name of the certificate. So if you change the name of the game, you have to apply a new copyright certificate. But this is something that is for your safeguard. So if, if, if you are publishing a game in China and then somebody wants to make a um, you know, cheap copy of that game um, uh, or, or even keep, uh, you know, uh, uh, take, take your code or something like that, this is certified by the government. And this is easier in the sense that uh, what is needed, the basic information of your company address, business license number and so forth, operation manual um, that shows that how the user will use your app. So this is not just games, this is in all of the apps. And then um, a document containing the first and last 2000 lines of your app source code. Uh, so, so in the in the uh, in the sense, it's easy itself. Uh, the developer actually, this is something that uh, also the Western developer can uh, uh, apply and get it. Uh, but 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 with a lot of back and forth with the Chinese government, if you don't have any help, it will take uh, six to eight months to complete complete this uh, uh, process. But if your partner applies for you, it, it, it's basically two to three weeks. Uh, but of course, then you have to remember that th then you have to trust your partner because your partner is basically then the legal holder uh, of that Chinese copyright certifi uh, certificate on your behalf. But these two, so the ISBN number, which is, which is a long, and, and harder to get because the numbers which they're giving, uh, getting, uh, giving out for the foreigners are small. And then the computer software copyright certificate. These are the main two things. And, and when you get those, uh, it's ready to, uh, the game or whatever application is, oh, sorry, the game is ready to be published. So hopefully I, I already made you uh, feel that it's very, very hard to go to a Chinese market because then we get to uh, our point here as a, as a Huawei. So uh, we offer in China assistance for global developers uh, into the Chinese markets. And, and in the first stage, I have to say that this is the important part. Uh, App Gallery, our Huawei uh, app store uh, is, is like third largest at least third or second last, I think the third largest right now in China. And, and of course, uh, people's phones, they have multiple uh, app stores. But the important thing is that we are not published. So, so we are a store there, but we are helping companies to get in. Uh, we have a store, but we are not publishing by ourselves. So this, what I here say, is really that how we assist and, 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 and consult um, the global game companies uh, and developers to get to the Chinese markets. So we have the uh, policy consulting. So we help with the admins, uh, admission qualification, data privacy, tax rules, and game licensing issues. Um, we have for the HMS, uh, which, which um, I think Kira will, will then in the end, uh, or <laughs> it's it, something that we will talk later, but which is our Huawei mobile system because in China, basically you know Google is not there, so so HMS uh, our system is is there, and uh, uh, so we have the integration support, uh, uh, ad services, so forth, uh, uh, release reviews, and so forth, and then then of course important thing 
in the app gallery. So in our store, we have the marketing resource supports, uh, joint, joint branding marketing um, um, ads and joint operation and so forth. So going, going back to those also later on. So basically what we want to be there and what we are is the one-stop consulting uh, for policies uh, uh, applicable uh, to Chinese markets. So basically, uh, our job also there is is to help uh, your, you know, if you want to go to the Chinese market, your company, but also, you know, uh, partners, uh, local partners, to, to handling the uh, uh, different resources and licensing and, and, and so forth. Uh, so here, when it says, let's say, handling period 80 workdays, that is a little bit longer now. This is the last year's. Uh, so it's basically they have been, uh, there's now more and more companies trying to get to the Chinese markets. They are, they are very strict on how many games they take per month. Uh, so as, as, as you saw, the, uh, see there, for example, in 2019, um, they were uh, licensed for 1,462 mobile games. And so 10% of those were European games. And last year, actually, it was less. But that was because they had a little fight with, with Apple for, for, for some reason. But, you know, we, but our job in Huawei in China is to help uh, and consult as, as much as, as possible. So um, then the one important thing also, when, when going to a Chinese market, and, and as I said that, because you have to have the Chinese uh, language, you have to think about the uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, rules also. So for example, you have to think about in the game, for example, how violent, the games cannot be really violent, all these kind of rules are, are in there. But the very important thing that I have seen that many of the companies that wants to go to the Chinese market, uh, they forget these things that, you know, they have been thinking like that, okay, uh, social media will be Facebook and, and Twitter and Messenger. And, you know, if there's extra payments, it's a PayPal and sharing through these and these and map service will be that. And then email will be, be going through uh, Gmail. And none of these are basically in China. So, as you see in the top, I don't even know all of these things, what, what are in the top. But there's, in, in, in China, if it's a maps, if it's a sharing, if it's a payment, if it's an account, if email, they have their own uh, services. So that is also something that you have to think like when putting your game out and making certain that you, you need all the uh, counterparts, you have to go through this. And this is, of course, something that, that we are helping uh, to find and, and to see that what is needed there. But, but really important to remember that basically none of the service, if they are not from China that we are using here, uh, uh, if, if we want to use them in China and Chinese mobile phones, they are not there. Then, as I said, uh, when we are going to Android, which is, which is the, um, about 90% of the market, uh, it is really fragmented market. So on the on the uh, left side, uh, Huawei, uh, uh, me, uh, Chetty, all these. So those are basically different app stores by mobile handset manufacturers. So all of course all the local mobile ha uh, handset manufacturers have their own store. So in Huawei, we we, we are the biggest. Uh, manufacturer in China, so it's it's App Gallery, uh, which is which is biggest in there. And then if we look the other side, the third-party app stores, then we are talking about Tencent uh, and 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 so forth and so forth and so forth. So this is really also something you have to think when you are thinking about partnering in China and 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 looking for the markets. It is not just like in Europe that, hey, I, I put that in a Google Play and that's it. You have to think like, okay, do I need to, uh, you know, do I find a partner that can be, for example, in the five or six biggest uh, 
uh, uh, Android uh, app stores there. And of course, then in the hardware side, for us it's easy. We are the biggest store there, but you know, still, of course, people are using multiple stores. And that is in China. It's it's really normal that you know, uh, people have of course the the hardware. Uh, store, the store of the hardware manufacturer, but then they take all the other stores also there. So, so that is something that is totally different that that it is here in the European side. Um, I will go, not go through this so much because this is, of course, the normal thing. Uh, you know, you need the at launch team, the operational team, product team, market development team. This is something also that uh, we we. Oh, we we are helping there. So then a couple of words more about App Gallery. So this is Huawei App Gallery. Uh, so our store. And uh, as you see, uh, we have been just growing and growing and growing. And this is not just China, but also uh, around the world. Uh, sadly, I don't have the latest figures in here. I can send it to you guys later on. But you know, it, it is getting bigger and bigger. And again, I, I think the fun part there is that monthly active users, you know, I, I think we are now somewhere near to 600 million. So yeah, we have the numbers. So so if, if you are interested to uh, work with the Huawei, we have these hundreds of millions of monthly active unique users. So easy, easy for us. But then let's go to uh, what I meant when I talk about the HMS. So in the in the uh, normal or, or in, in many of the you know if you if you buy uh, uh, somebody else's uh, uh, you know for example Nokia uh, 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 Android phone it has the Google mobile system uh, Google mobile services so it has uh, the Google Maps so forth and so forth. Uh, quite frankly, because we had this uh, issue with the US, we started then, and this was started already earlier. We basically took all of the different kits that are needed to make a great applications, great games, whatever, to the mobile mobile device, and we basically have all the same kits. So, and what that means is that, for example, if you have a game that is using, let's say, um, Unity, uh, and now now Kira and Kim can can then come come over the line and uh, uh, mobile line and kill me. But you know, if you have, for example, let's say EAP uh, and advertising from Unity or Google, otherwise it doesn't use any, let's say, location, anything like um, cameras, more like that. You know, we are talking a couple of hours of work that you basically have the version for HMS, which means that you have a version for Chinese market, uh, uh, technology-wise. So, so basically, the kits are, are the same that are in the uh, in the uh, uh, Google mobile system, but you know, we 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 just have the we have all the same, and actually nowadays we have also more uh, kits. Than, than Google. So we are bringing all the time uh, a new, innovative, better kits there. So just to make certain that uh, it's easy to bring new devices. And then a couple of uh, advertising things here, because I saw that the time is running. Um, so this is, of course, something that when we are then in China, and if it's uh, in, it is an app gallery. So uh, when your game on applic or application gets to the Chinese markets, your publisher or your uh, partner is publishing that on the on the app gallery. We have the great situation there that we basically, of course, own all the uh, uh, marketing and advertising and visibility parts of the, the app gallery. And we have been trying to be better there than, uh, than Apple Store or, or Play Store. So we have these top banners we have to pass push messages. We are telling about the new re uh, releases, global apps in China, uh, developer stories, uh, um, splash screens, a lot of 
new functionalities to make certain that the our partner companies, that the the game or application companies that want to go to the Chinese markets with us, or even if if you guys have something that you want to get to the app gallery here here in Europe, we have a lot of tools that we can make certain that the users really really get that that your game or your application to their phone. And then of course, well, the same thing as everywhere, advertising, paid promotions, but you know, this is something of course that is a normal business as normal business as, as in other stores. Um, I'm, I'm actually not going through this. This is again, just more like advertising. If, if somebody wants to contact me about the paid promotion in the, not just in a Chinese market, but also in the HMS and how it works and what are the good times and so forth, more than happy to go through that. But I, I think this is, this is then going a little bit uh, too, too deep there. And as I said, but this is, uh, as I said earlier, our uh, advertising possibilities are right now a lot better. What I, you know, in my past, what I've seen with the with the Google and and uh, and, and iOS phones. Uh, more ads. I don't. I forget to put. There's too many ads things here. If somebody, as I said, if somebody have more more questions about those, um, ask me later. Then just a couple of quick uh, quick uh, examples. Uh, monthly. A language learning app, something if, if any of you are doing learning apps, they are they are huge in China. Um, and this this was something that uh, they uh, partnership us in 2020. Uh, we basically help them to uh, to have the uh, banner push initial release, all that. Um, and you know they have been they have been really, really happy with that. And that is something that, as I said, education is is uh, very, very, very popular in in in, in China. And then uh, Face FaceTune uh, selfie processing app, again uh, started started with us in China. Uh, again, this is kind of like I think just after a couple of months, but you know, uh, we just give them. Give them the uh, full full uh, cooperation in the uh, in the brand wise and so forth, and, and got a got a very nice uh, uh, figures out of the Chinese Chinese mainland. And the seven hundred thousand plus was really just after 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 launch. So so that is that is that. But then I I basically uh, Kira, you you wanted to tell. Then about the well, let's do this. Any question from now? I know this is a huge amount of info. You have the PDF. Uh, uh, I, I think you will be or you will be delivered the PDF. You can contact me on any time um, uh, uh, about these things and about the China uh, and and and. Uh, but I, I want to give two learnings for you guys. Yes, it seems to have a lot of work and it's not fast. But the important thing is that there's a very good publishing uh, uh, publishing companies in, in, in China, and, and we know a lot of them, and some of them are also here in Finland, and we are working with them. And the very important part is that if you are interested on China market, Huawei is definitely always there to help. We, we, have, we have the ability and, and, and uh, spirit to, to help you guys. If you ever want to see that, would the China market be for you? So any questions about that before I, I give it over to Kira? One, uh, one question, uh, is it important to learn Chinese to be successful in China market? Um, it again, well, when I started, uh, I have my history. I, I used to do some business in China. And uh, uh, I, for example, I just learned some basic basic stuff there <laughs> in Chinese. 
because, uh, uh, and this was already in 2000, but nowadays we are in a situation that if, we, if you are working with the uh, Chinese companies that are working with the Western companies, uh, they have a very, very good English. They, and, and, uh, and, and they nowadays, I would say in 2000, the attitude have changed in 20 years. I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct here. The attitude really have changed in 20 years because in 20 years ago, it wasn't China today. So they were kind of like looking the Europeans who were coming, Americans coming there that, hey, what, what they are doing here. Now, now they are, of course, more, they understand that, for example, in Huawei, 20 years ago, Huawei was startup making internet routers or something like that. Uh, now they are the international company, so they they have learned, and 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 all all of these partners, a lot of these guys have and guys and girls, they have been uh, in the universities in the U.S. in in England and working also abroad. So of course, you get easier uh, to make the business there. You you are same thing they, if Chinese come here and and talk nice Finnish, but otherwise no, they understand. English, but then the only thing, all of the governmental stuff is Chinese. And that's why I said that, you know, then then you need to have the uh, partner uh, because otherwise all the paperwork, all that has, has to be in Chinese. So it's nice to have, but nowadays, I, you know, Eng English is, is the working lang language there also. Okay, thanks. Any, any, anything else? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Daniel from Sweden. Uh, nice presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned uh, okay. that they want um, <clears throat> social impact and the tourist mode. Um, are what are these, and are they difficult to um, to um, get or to appreciate? Uh, no, no. Actually, the the social impact is is really kind of like. Um, uh, if the game, so basically it is like a story of that, is this just for fun or does this game, for example, have some educational purpose or these kind of things? So that is the social social impact. And uh, and then the uh, tourist version is, is basically, so that is the thing that both ways, that if the Chinese, so, so what will happen if... Uh, 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 Chinese who have downloaded that game in China uh, plays that game, uh, for example, in, in Europe. So is, is there any, any changes or is it totally same? And is there billing problems or anything like that? So, so that is. Uh, the, in the, when you get the PDFs, uh, in the slide 10 and 11, I, I use the uh, uh, Yodo. Uh, Yoda one is, is a great person on these. And, and, and there's a link for the Pocket Gamer uh, uh, news uh, or, or, or story about that. And there's also, I didn't put them here, but through that link, you also get the links to the, uh, to the uh, government. They have some of this material in English, what you have to have, but even though you have to make them in Chinese. But you know, there's there's then the more detail. But that is social impact means that you know, uh, yeah, this is a fun game for kids and and this kind of thing. Or you know, this is a nonsense game. Or this is this is how the people can learn. You know, let's say, be faster in their brain. That is the social impact idea. So if, is the game good or bad? I, I mean that. But of course, you, it's kind of like the same thing still in Germany that, you know, no red blood, uh, no, uh, no red blood that it has to be green. Here's the same thing that they want to not just to see that the game is, uh, they want to see that the game is nonviolent and so forth, but they want to also, it's easy, so easier if your game is making, doing something good. So you probably are getting faster faster the, the uh, uh, licensing process. Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
So if if nothing else, Kira, did you want to Yes, I can Hello, um, everybody. say something about yeah, good. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay, pretty good. So I would like to introduce myself because I was a bit late. So I'm uh, my name is Kira Kamshilova and I'm lead of developer technical support engineering team at Huawei. So actually the goal of our team is to support developers and to explain them so what they need to do to make their applications work in our Huawei devices without Google mobile services with HMS only. So I would like to give you some so idea what is Huawei mobile services because finally so you will get to this point if you will make a decision to publish your application in China. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, good. Yep. So I would like to start. Okay, okay, please. Okay, so I would like to start with this slide. So which actually this is a very important. So the uh, start point of everything. So at, uh, at this stage is mobile device. And in this, uh, so, and we have uh, for end users, we have a set of mob Huawei mobile services like for example, books, video, music, themes, search, game center, so a lot. And one of the uh, basic stones is App Gallery. Huawei App Gallery, this is our application store. So this is what we have for the end users. They can download applications, they can start using, and so also we have another services. But besides that, for developers, for you, we have Huawei mobile services as the case. So this is a set of libraries so you need to use to make your application work fine in our mobile devices. But before, let's imagine that you will start, you will make a decision that you would like to publish your application in Huawei Gallery in China. So what I recommend you to do first, so, do, uh, so first you need to test your application, your game, for example, with our Huawei devices without Google. And you need to make sure that it works or not. So there are so because when we talk about uh, this ban, uh, which was uh, announced uh, by USA in 2019, so we are uh, starting from this time. Google mobile services can't be so are not available in Huawei devices. But it also but it and it means that some SDKs will not work but there are firebase services which can continue work fine so because they are not gms dependent so you need to make sure that maybe you don't need to integrate anything so it, and your application will work fine so please do it first but if you will see that for example that uh, payment doesn't work because you are using google mobile um, services ip in-app purchase SDK. Um, for example, you are using some analytics, yeah, and it doesn't, you, you can see that these reports and events are not reported properly in Huawei devices. So in this case, you need to make a decision about, you need to consider HMS integration. So, and when we talk about HMS integration, let's go to this slide, I have another one, yeah. So we have uh, different, is the case, please hold on. We have different, a lot of SDKs. Okay, this slide. We have a lot of SDKs available for developers. So we have a basic uh, SDKs, for example, like in app purchases, location, map, push, uh, analytics, ads, site, game service. Also, we have a special SDKs for graphics. Uh, AI, media, system, security, smart services. So this this set of SDKs we have. And actually in total, we have uh, around more than 70 SDKs available and uh, for developers. So yes, and besides that, the most important are payments, ads, also map, and actually search engine. So if you will make a decision so to start integration, uh, so you can contact us. So because we support, my team supports uh, developers in Finland, Sweden, Denmark and Norway, and we will help you. So it's possible. 
you can't uh, of course you can do this integration by yourself but also we can help you with this actually i didn't want to spend too much time on this do you have any questions uh, i have a question here yeah. um you mentioned that you provide services in in the nordic countries but uh i know we also have uh, interested game companies, for example, in Estonia and Latvia. Do you have any plans on broadening your services there, or do they have their own uh, Huawei branch there? Uh, actually, so if you have, uh, so we can help uh, our partners in Baltic region as well. It's not a problem. We already support some partners from there. For example, Bolt received our support, so it's it's fine, Ari. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, <clears throat> yeah, and if, if there's again companies also from the business development side that are uh, interested on this and want to talk, then again, uh, you know, Ari, please send everybody my my, my uh, email. So I'm I'm uh, part of our region with this uh, Nordic Baltic, all the way from Turkey, Poland, all these countries, uh, part of our region. Uh, game vertical. So, and in in Finland, I'm I'm the uh, lead business developer for the game industry and the game companies. And and the, even you know whatever country, I'm more than happy to to uh, if it's if it's not our uh, part here uh, to uh, put the thing forward to the uh, right business developer in the in the in the right country or in in that country, because we are really not just in China, but everywhere else, uh, we are looking for great game companies because right now, frankly, and, and this is this is the situation is that we, because we are the underdogs, we are building the third ecosystem. Uh, we also now have the situation that we don't have so much noise than, than uh, uh, you know, uh, Google Play. And, and iOS, so so basically, it's easier to get the game in front. And I think, as you as you all saw in the in the China example, if they are giving like one thousand eight hundred game license, uh, one sorry one thousand four hundred game licenses per year, the noise is quite different than it's it, it is in the Western market, where it's like one thousand four hundred games per well, probably per day. <laughs> coming to the stores. And actually, I would like to mention about Huawei, uh, this, our Huawei mobile services. The thing is that uh, when you will do this integration, this technical job for Chinese market, it means that your application will be ready to be published in Huawei gallery in Europe. So, and it means that, so you will not be targeted only to Chinese market, but to overseas market. Uh, so uh, Huawei devices without Google mobile services. And actually, so we are, uh, so the first model of Huawei devices without Google mobile services was launched in uh, 2019. It was made 30 Pro last year, it, it, there was P40. So mate, 40, yeah, so, and we will have more and more devices without GMS, so coming. So it means that, and there will be more and more end users with these such devices. So do not exclude them from your target audience, yeah, overseas. Okay, thank you. Uh, time is running out. Do we have any more questions? Because I have a couple if no one else has any questions. I'm just going to add the exact number. So yeah, Google Play releases uh, uh, 2,300 applications approximately per day. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite crowded there. Yeah, only well, we have one minute left. Uh, you uh, kind of answered my question there, uh, but uh, the whole Chinese market approach seems kind of quite a lot of hard work and you have to have connections and stuff. Uh, for a startup that is just starting their business and developing their first game, for example, would you recommend that they go uh, to the Chinese market first and broaden their uh, scope from there onwards? 
Well, as I, as I said, the problem is that it will getting to the Chinese market and getting the ASPN number is so long uh, long uh, run that uh, no, because and then it's easier to get the ISBN number also if if as as you saw in the documents, they want to see where the game is already out and all that. So I would say that that oh, when when you have the situation that the game is already uh, working in some other markets, and of course then I would say that then the if the Chinese markets and if 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 the developer feels that the game would be good in Chinese market. Then I would start with, you know, Singapore, Indonesia, Malay Malaysia, taking that to the Asian markets. Because what I also know is that uh, uh, it's not just China, but also the uh, other Eastern markets. Uh, for some reason, and for example, with the with App Gallery, you know, it's just to put them in. We, you know, it's easy to publish there. But then if it works in Indonesia, Malaysia. Philippines, it very probably works also in Chinese markets. But for some reason, the European companies are, have been really careful with the Asian markets. And I don't understand why, because the, the numbers are so good. They, they, they are just big spenders on games. And they, they, they also like, maybe it's, we think that they want to have Asian kind of games, but they really like a lot of, of, of European style of games there. Okay, thank you. Uh, if people want to keep up with you and what you are doing or contact you, is it email or LinkedIn or what's the best way to uh, find both, you? Yeah, yeah, both. So I can, yeah, so, so, yeah, but you know, easier probably just a direct email. So uh, I, I will, I will always answer. Excellent. And all the participants of this uh, accelerator meetup will get the presentation that you presented panel. So thanks everybody for this uh, wonderful hour with us. See you next time. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.